What's wrong? What are you doing? Is your toy in there? Tucker. Did your toy get under there? Oh. Oh. Almost. Almost. Oh, you almost got it. You almost got it. Alright, you need some help? You get it? Come on, Tuck. Come on. Come on, Tuck. Come on. I'll tell you what. You ready? Oof. That's on you. That's on you. You gotta get it. You get it. Oh, there you go. We gotta get the wrapper off that thing. Okay. All right. Hey, he's having fun. Oh yeah, that's fun in the tuck. What? Why? Why'd you do that, stupid? Do that, huh? All right. Well, now you're just playing fetch with yourself. I'm fine with that. Have fun. Oh boy. Fall things are happening, but uh, have to wait on that one. People have asked me why I've been doing stuff with mums. I was just like, hey, it's it's just a little bit too early. It's not time yet. Where, where the, there were flowers on you a little while ago. Uh, just because with the mums, if I had planted them back in September, which it still is, but yet they wouldn't be in flower for me in October when I want them to be. So I was trying to feed the tortoise. Are we, all the flowers fall off in the storm? Okay, I'm going to have some leaves, I guess. Eh, she's done eating right now anyways. I will say though, I think there's a little bit of chlorosis seeping in here on this hibiscus tree. Always something, right? No big deal, it's easy enough to treat. I actually think I'm going to do a complete repot on this hibiscus. It's been in this planter, or it's not even in a planter, but it's been in this pot for like a couple years. It could use some fresh soil. So, I'm not really going to worry about supplementing. I think it probably just needs nice, fresh soil. Oh, okay, there we go. I don't know why I'm but oh, <laughs> it's just it's just not meant to be. Come on now, work with me a little bit here. All right, if you get hungry for some hibiscus later, there you go. You guys enjoy that succulent haul? Did you see the succulent haul? Check it out. Lots of fun new things. Can't wait to get moving with those guys, but it's probably gonna be a while till I can. Hey Tobes, how you doing, bud? Because. It's time. It's that time of year. We're approaching October where I live. The frost can hit anywhere from October 15th to like November 20th. It does seem like clockwork though that no matter what, the week of November 20th we have really bad, terrible cold. Always happens. So whereas last year though I had to move the plants inside like October 15th, 20th, which I've never had to do before. That being said, so I'm approaching about the one month mark with a lot of these plants, so I need to start digging things up and moving them into pots. So they have a chance while they're outside to go ahead and get rooted in those. The day lengths are shorter, nights are cooler, so they're not in active growth. So I really probably should have done this like a month ago, but I didn't, I didn't want to dig them up. They're too big and too pretty. So I'm going to go ahead and start digging up these alakajas and then see how much of a root mass there is down there so I can kind of decide what I need to do as far as potting goes. I could let these go dormant, but uh, I don't I don't want to. I want to keep them growing. And if it looks like they're not enjoying being in the grow space, which is entirely possible, the area is not meant for everything, if that happens, then I can cut them back, pull them out of their dirt, and let them go dormant. But I want to try it this way first. I thought they were gonna be really hard to dig up, but I already took my shovel and put it in there, and uh, yeah. So these were not on the drippers that pour the water like straight down, they were on drippers that spray and sprinkle. So they were getting light, shallow waterings and not deep, deep waterings, which is probably why, I mean, look at, look at that. These guys are huge and they're bouncing all over the place. So maybe, at least with this one, watch this one be really easy and the rest of them just be a nightmare. Shouldn't be too bad to dig them up. I do expect them to like defoliate and be very unhappy with me when I'm done, but they have grown so incredibly much. Here's my shovel handle, at least. I mean, look at, this is huge. There's a lot of plants in there too. Uh, maybe I'll divide them up. I don't know, I need to shut up. I'm gonna get in here, get this guy <laughs> pulled out, which um, I think will be pretty easy to do. And yeah, and then we'll get back to it. <sighs> well, that was a lot easier than I thought it was going to be, despite my heavy breathing, they were kind of heavy. They pulled right out, pretty much no problem. Whew, they have uh, long roots on them, and sorry, let me catch my breath. What I was saying, that soil is very loose, very loamy, so they pulled right out. I would have liked for the roots to be a little bit deeper, but it's kind of convenient that they came out no problem, isn't it? So yeah, now I just need to find pots to put these in. Also, sometimes it's advisable to go ahead and cut these guys back very heavily, if not all the way when you dig them up. I don't see reason to do that because they'll 
start the defoliation process on their own. This way, if, while they have their foliage on them, they still can take in some uh, sunlight, get some energy, and do their thing a little bit, and I'll handle that later. So, I don't even know what I'm saying. So, those are done. These are the big guys. Then I have these two over here, which... I don't know. I want to dig them up. They also add a ton of privacy, so they might be staying and uh, I might be doing things a little bit differently with those. I'm not really sure because once I dig those up, it's going to be a clear view all the way through and I don't, I just, I'm not in the mood for that. But there are two more in the driveway. Oh, and the Tide Giants. I usually wait a little bit longer on the Tide Giants, so not those quite yet. I do need to get the Sago Palm up and out and potted though, but I need to go get it a pot. Whew. These guys are rooted in a little bit differently. I mean, probably the same, it's just, it's clay, so they're not pulling up quite as easily, but yeah, that'll do it. Thanks for your help, Toby. Yeah, good boy, Toby. All right, that one, oh, that one was very, very heavy. I think these are the Wentii variety, but I'm not positive, they just have darker veining on them. Didn't grow quite as much, but I mean, they actually, they're more robust, I think, than the other ones, just, uh. Not as much height. I also got them a lot smaller, though. And yeah, that looks completely different. I did my best to not tear the impatience up, but, you know, not much I could do about it. They had to drag them out. I couldn't lift them up all the way with, not with all that clay under them. But yeah, this is looking pretty junky now. I could use a fresh layer of mulch and a good cutback on those impatience, I think. Oh, was that too much for you? Ah! Had to get him cool down? Yeah, I bet you worked up a sweat, didn't you? Stand there watching me being cute. Just sitting back here and heard like an odd, terrifying whis- not whispering, whistling coming up and uh, someone came walking through my gate. It's the irrigation company. I didn't know they were coming, but apparently the leak they worked on last week isn't fixed. But this guy, oh, you are exercising so much self-control staying here and not going after. Going after in a friendly way, I mean, but he really, he needs to go check it out. But Toby, Toby, stranger danger, stranger danger Toby, you don't know him, but it'd also be nice for you to be a guard dog. That's just, that's not happening. That's not in your nature. That's okay. That's okay. We love you for who you are. That's right, Toby. Okay, so, guess what I have to do now? Lowe's. Um, I don't think so. I'm going to go with the little guys first. <sighs> More grass seed. Oh, stop it. Okay, that looks like an awful lot of fun. I guess it's time to get to work. All right, I have gone through and absolutely annihilated these pots with my drill. Even on the sides. Aeration is really, really key to keep these guys from rotting just because when I have my plant set up in the winter time, the air circulation, I have fans in there, but it's just... It's not always the best because it's an enclosed area and these are probably going to be tucked kind of far away from everything else so that they don't get overwatered. actually. I even made sure to put holes in the feet because I put holes there and I realized that's where they're going to be sitting so that's not going to do much good. So that, that should do it. Yeah, there's a, plenty of holes in there. Now I know these pots seem kind of small but I was going for cheap. I wanted square. I mean, it was a last minute decision, but I was like, hey, square's a good idea because these are gonna be really top heavy, so these won't tip quite as easily, but uh, I am putting some pretty big plants here. They're still gonna tip. Definitely still going to tip. It's gonna be a tight squeeze, but that's all right. I'm just trying to get them through the winter time. I'm not trying to grow them out or anything like that. I mean, if they do grow, that would be ideal, but I think you know what I mean. All right, so now I've gone ahead, I've gotten as much of the kind of clay and stuff off of there as I could. Put that over there. There actually isn't a lot of clay around these two. The ones in the driveway have a lot of clay. I'm going to want to break that off. I don't want to store them in clay. That'll hold too much moisture. So, small layer of potting mix in here. Just all purpose. I just use miracle Grow. The particular batch that I've been getting lately seems to be draining really, really well. So, I'm fine with it. I don't need anything fancy for these guys. So, yeah, I just need to... Huh. They're probably going to be kind of lopsided for a while. But that's okay. I might need another person for this. I don't know. I'm gonna give it a try. Hey, that wasn't so bad. I'm keeping them in here kind of shallow. I'm not putting them up too terribly high. That way they have the extra support. Because, I mean, these are, I got these on clearance and as it was, they were still like, I think $13 regular price. I think they were eight or nine on clearance. So, uh, you know, I don't expect them to look great, but I, I'm not gonna lie, I, I don't hate this. I really don't. 
yeah, I'm gonna go through, get the others done. They only had three of them. Well, they had more, but I couldn't reach them, and I couldn't find one to help me. So uh, they're not gonna be matching pots, which I don't, I don't really care about. In the winter time, when these are inside, not gonna be able to see the pots anyways. Again, not so bad. I'm pruning this one up a little bit more than the other one, but yeah, this will, this will do. I'm going to move them into uh, part shade for probably a week and a half or so. Keep them hydrated so they can recover, and I'm going to be hitting these with the systemic as well. It's time to start getting the systemic in there while they maybe saw some active growth in them. Would have been smarter to do that before I dug them up, because now they're in recovery mode, but I just... Eh, I forgot. But that's another reason I'm doing this right now. It's because I need to go ahead and get these guys treated. I need to get the systemics in here, uh, because I'm, there are snails on them. I'm seeing signs of mealybug, and if you've been around, you know I've been struggling with mealybugs ever since I bought one clearance plant from a big box store several years ago and it's been an ongoing thing it's better but i'm starting to see them show up again so i'm doing it now you want to get your systemics and while things are still in active growth which i kind of miss the what's it called miss the mark on that with these guys but my other guys they still have a few weeks of active growth and i try and keep my grow space if you don't know the garage this is my grow space in the winter time i try and keep it warm enough that things stay in active growth but you know, December is usually pretty mild, uh, and so is November, so I may not have the heaters on in there. I might just be keeping things at, like, 55, maybe somewhere in there. That'll probably just be, stay that way on its own. And then, uh, come January, it gets really cold outside, and I crank the heaters up and warm things up. It's just, I don't want to use the electricity to heat it November, December, January, February. It's a lot. Uh, it would be a lot better if you can take a couple of those months out and just go January and February. A little bit of March. Maybe a little bit of December. I don't know. I'm I'm rambling at this point. I have two more in the driveway, and they are... Oh, why did I buy you? I don't know. I'll put one of the Thai Giants in there. That's my dog. He's been playing with that. Uh, the bottle is not my dog. My dog has been playing with that bottle. That's what I was trying to say. Yeah, see, I have this Plumeria pulled out because I was starting to see signs of mealybugs on it. want to get into the sun. Get those guys out of there. Okay, excuse me, giant leaf. All right, so I have these two pots right here. These are very old clearance pots. I'm not crazy about them, but why buy new pots if I don't need to? So that's what I'm going to go ahead and put these guys in. But they have more clay around their root balls. So I'm going to break that up first. Okay. Whew. I went ahead and actually decided to use one of the square planters for this one just because uh, it had a lot of clay around its root ball, and I didn't want to break off too much because, it, well, I don't want to kill it. Or stress it out too much is what I should really say. That does mean, though, that I'm going to have to wait on repotting the Sago Palm because I want to use the square pot for that. So I'll have to hunt down another one. So my Sago, it's kind of hard to tell from here, but it's very, very, very top-heavy. And uh, it's just, anytime I put it in a round pot, it, I have trouble getting it to stand up. So I'm trying to get this guy rerooted and re-going. I think one of those square planters would be ideal because it's not going to tip as easily. But uh, these guys are tough. Last winter, I just left it on the ground. It wasn't even potted. I was just like, you, you just rest till spring. And that worked out well. Got lots of new growth out of it. It's doing well, but I want to get potted up into something. But I don't think this is going to work. I think that'll just fall right over. So that'll have to wait. Man, these things are huge. That garden looks so shabby now, doesn't it? I'm actually okay with that because here's the thing. Next year, I'm redoing this whole spot. That Alberta spruce, it needs to go. I've been saying that for a while, but it's it's time. Dwarf Alberta spruce. But you can see, this is very, very old. It's like probably a good 20, 25 years old. It just, it looks junky. The top's died off, and that means it's done. So I'm going to leave it for this winter time just because it does kind of shade things a little bit. The sun gets really strong coming in through this window. But yeah, next year, next year, that's going to go. I have an old tree trunk to remove. Going to move the gingers around just redoing that whole spot which i'm looking forward to then looking forward to a little bit of change actually it's always a reflection here makes it so hard to see everybody they're doing well though i'll explain that in another video did i tell you i finally got i know i didn't tell you why am i asking i got a wind chime not that exciting but i'm really picky about wind chimes i've been trying to find one for a few years that was the right price. I've seen plenty that I like, but they were outrageously expensive. This was only like $15, $20 from Earthbound. Doesn't make a lot of noise, which makes it perfect. And if I actually get it hung up on something properly, then it will spin better too. So that's, that's exciting. Who doesn't love a wind chime? I'm sure I'll actually probably be complaining about the wind chime when I'm filming videos and it's making noise. But for right now, I'm happy about it. Made out of this piece of palm here. 
a little piece from a palm spath. Yeah, that's fitting for the backyard, I think. There was another one I saw that was like all rainbows and absolutely beautiful, but I was like, eh, that, that's a bit much. Why am I still talking about the wind chime? I got something really exciting in the mail today. Not this. I've had this for quite a while. Hey, there's me. Hello. On that note of being able to see me, I finally got a cord. I've had this monitor for quite a while. It's a field monitor. I actually got it as a Christmas present. And what this does is I can hook it up here. I got a special attachment here so I can have my mic on, which is normally facing this way, and put a monitor up here so I can see what's going on from in front of the camera. Because as much as I love this camera, it, uh, the screen doesn't flip out so you can see what's going on if you're standing in front of it. The problem is I need a micro HDMI to a micro HDMI and I've ordered many and they would come in as a micro to a mini or a micro to it. It's been a very frustrating process. So uh, I don't know. Let's see if it works. It doesn't fit. Okay. Well, that's because this is a multi-port. Well, once I get this up and running the way I want to, it's it's going to be pretty awesome. Now, I might be able to find a converter so I can hook this to the regular HDMI port up in here. I don't know. That's not going to happen today, though. I used to have one. Actually, back in the day, I used to hook my phone to my TV so I could stream stuff on the TV before I started using my PlayStation to do that. Well, still fun geeking out over technology, even when you can't use it. Whatever. So yeah, this is how that will actually be once I have it up and running and I'll be able to stand in front of the monitor, look at it better. I might need to get a new attachment so I can swivel it a little bit because if I have something angled down, I'm gonna need that angled up. But yeah, that'll be nice. Cause see, hi, I can see you right now. The problem is sometimes the autofocus on this camera, like it doesn't always work. So I can't trust it standing on the other side of it. So this will this will be a game changer once I get it up and running. Okay, I actually have to go. I know this has been a shorter vlog, kind of fast paced and then slow, or slow and then fast. Sorry about that. I've been rushy, trying to get a lot of things done. I can't really explain why right now, but you'll find out next week. I'm not saying that to be teasy or clickbaity or anything like that. I, just, I, I can't tell you until next week. So next weekend, You'll find out why. It's not that big of a deal. Everything's good, though. Life is good. Exciting things are happening, but uh, they require some time and attention. That's all. And I have that euphorbia sitting over there because it has mealybugs on it. So I was trying to kind of bake those off of there. As much as I'm not ready for fall, even though it is fall, technically, I'm not really ready for winter, I should say, I'm kind of having fun and sort of excited to be getting in doing these sorts of things. I don't know why, because it's like I'm repotting things and changing things up without having to buy anything. Does that make any sense? There's still a lot to do, that's for sure. Oh, hold on, something I wanna show you guys. A few weeks ago I did a video repotting my Zygopetalum and it seems to be okay with the repot. Look at that, we've got new flowers on there. There's even, let me pull this out. You can see some signs of new growth right in there too. I think there's more than that. Well, maybe not, but it didn't lose some of its newer growth, which is good, and like I said, it's flowering. I know sometimes people go into that whole entire thing about like shock flowering. I don't fully buy into that, not in this situation anyways, because it's holding on okay. The only dying off leaves are from the old pseudobulbs. I'm, uh, I'm really pleased with this. I will say though, I have been having to keep this guy very, very wet. I even have it set where my drippers kind of missed onto it a little bit. So it's getting watered about three times a day. Not heavily, but enough where it's staying evenly moist. And uh, I have actually always done that with my zygos, even when I, I well, this is my first time repotting these, but uh, yeah, they seem to appreciate that. It cools them off, gives them a temperature change, but uh, I'm gonna have to reduce that as the nighttime temperatures drop, obviously. This one I had sitting on my tiki bar and I hadn't done that with, and it, uh, it wasn't handling things as well at all. So I moved it over here with the other one about a week ago. And uh, yeah, look at that. Already got some new growth coming out, so. They seem to be doing okay with the potting medium that I went ahead and tossed together for them, and yeah, that's really good news. I don't know if you know, but I was really nervous about repotting these guys, because I see so often they get repotted by people and then they die. I mean, it's only been a few weeks. It can take weeks to months sometimes for stress to show on our plants, but I think it's okay. I mean, it seems happy. It's got flowers on it. It's not a huge, impressive set of flowers, but still, it spiked and flowered rather quickly. I mean, not that quickly. It's been... I want to say about four to six weeks since this is repotted. Oh wait, no it hasn't. It's only been about a month. I did this, I want to say, late 
August. So yeah, it's been about a month and new growth, flowers, all good things. All right, time to go. I am really looking forward to next week's vlog. You'll see why when it comes out. I don't know how heavy it's gonna be on gardening stuff, but I mean, we'll see. But if you make sure to follow me on Instagram, I'll definitely be posting pictures and you'll kind of get an idea of what's going on. I also have Snapchat and Twitter. I don't use them as often, but they're there. Twitter, mostly I have it set to like automatically post when new videos come out, but I forget to actually go on there and post stuff. So I'm sorry about that. If people's timelines are just flooded with links, uh, I'm gonna figure out a way to fix that. Anyways, like I was saying, or maybe I was saying, I don't even know. I have all my social media linked down below, down there in the description, so follow me. I follow everybody back, and it's a lot of fun seeing everybody's pictures. Uh, really love talking with everybody, too. Got my flowers on there, succulents, all my pets, and videos, and it's just it's just nonsense, and it's fun. And comment down below, because I love talking to everybody and see everybody has going on in their garden. We're going to be keeping a close eye on these guys. Like I said, I'll be moving them into the part shade a little bit later. I'm going to need someone to help me move these, I think, so that they don't just fall over. And uh, yeah, they may defoliate. We will see. I don't know fingers crossed they should be okay though got a phone call in the middle of me saying goodbye to everybody sorry about that if that came through and it was really loud yeah comment down below say hi love hearing from everybody also don't forget to like the video it helps a ton it means the world to me helps the channel thank you so 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 much and subscribe as well upload multiple times a week and don't forget to hit that notification bell that way you know when new videos come out these <laughs> big old sweet potatoes there's a lot going on so i am kind of speeding through things i'm sorry but they're all exciting things try to embrace it embrace the change stay positive and take advantage of opportunities when they come my way hope y'all are doing well and having a great day and as always everybody keep on growing bye bye Help me, help me, help me.